Hey there, I'm Sammy and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I am flipping a family heirloom back in my hometown. I cannot wait to share this transformation with you, so let's get to it. This set of furniture has been in my family for many, many years and I want to bring it back to life. Now, in my last video, I did a bedroom makeover and you might have seen the finished look of these dressers and I want to show you how I went about redoing these. So if you're interested in the full bedroom makeover, that video will be linked. You can go watch that, of course, after you finish this video. So let's jump right in. All right, this is the set that we are starting off with. I'm super excited to share this flip with you. Not only is this gonna be a really fun thing to flip, but you might notice I'm in a different work spot than normal, and that's because I'm in my hometown, I'm in Alaska. For those of you who don't know it, I'm from Alaska, currently living in Georgia, so we've got quite the difference there. My attire is quite different than working in Georgia because it's pretty chilly here. But I am so glad I finally got my hands on this and have some time to flip some furniture because I have been itching to get my hands on a piece of furniture to redo while I've been here and now's the time. So let's get started. First things first, the plan for this dresser. Hmm. I'm gonna be paint washing this. So hope you're not bored of that yet. <laughs> I feel like that's just my go-to recently. I've really been into the paint wash look. I, I just love the way it looks and these are a perfect candidate for a light paint wash. You could also stain them really dark. Some parts are solid white oak and others have a white oak veneer. I think it's gonna be a pretty easy flip. It's got some gunk on it, so first, I need to find some cleaner because this is not my normal shop. A really important thing to note here, this is going to be a very minimal flip because I'm not in my typical workspace. I don't have all the tools I could ever need that I usually use on my furniture flips, so I'm trying to keep this as low key as I can. Paint washing is super easy, really just need to sand it down. There are some areas I will need to repair, which I did purchase just a few things, but again, super minimal flip, so that's what I'm going for. I did, however, fly my Festral sander all the way up here from Georgia, but that's just, I love it so much, and I can't live without it now, so. You could do this with a regular sander, though. It just would take a little bit longer probably. So, yeah, I can't wait. All right, I found a spray bottle and I just put a little bit of water and dish soap in it. I'm gonna give this all a really quick clean and then we'll get into sanding because we've got a lot of sanding to do. So, let's get to work. And then I started removing all of the drawers, the screws, the hardware. Overall, these dressers were in decent shape. Like I had mentioned, these have been in my family for many, many years. So they've definitely seen some better days, but I think for the life they've lived, they're in decent shape. So I wanted to get all the drawers out. There was so many screws with these doors on the nightstand and the dresser. And then I finished off by wiping everything else down. All right, so obviously somebody has taken this apart and put it back together before because this screw is so warped, it's a circle. There's a circle hole in the middle of the screw. And honestly, I think I'm just gonna cut it off. 
I can't think of an easier way to deal with this. If you guys have any ideas or no tricks to getting these warped screws out, let me know in the comments below. But for now, going in with this bad boy, we're gonna cut it off and go from there. Thank goodness I had this multi-purpose tool laying around because it was super helpful and it got this screw out really quickly. And then I did make sure to vacuum up the area really well after I was finished because there was metal shards and one I don't want to get any on my hands and my dog was walking around so I didn't want him to be walking in any of that. I've got everything removed, hardware's off, drawers are out. You can see what I'm working with now. And I think I'm gonna start by sanding all the drawer fronts because that's gonna be an easy win. They're all smooth, flat, gonna be easy to sand. Even easier that I brought my Festral sander for these rounded edges. So I'm gonna start with all those and I'll move on to the dresser bases. Okay, I'm starting with this bad boy. And we have this because I couldn't bring my whole dust extractor up to Alaska. So we're just gonna make do with what we have and it's fine. I have a respirator, so we're good to go in that department. I am starting with a 80 grit sandpaper. I will say this sandpaper that I have here, I purchased it off of Amazon and an 80 grit in this is much different than the 80 grit discs that I purchased from Home Depot for my round orbital sander. I feel like these aren't as coarse and they may feel the same at first, but they lose a lot of this grit. And so this 80 grit lasts me a lot longer than going in with like a 150 grit in this square piece. I feel like I use more of the 150, whereas this 80 grit will last me a while and take off a good amount of the finish. So. That's what I'm going with in this. I will switch to a 120 grit with my round orbital sander though, just because I'm picky about my sandpaper and I like the 120 and the 80 in this. I do have a pad on this because I'm gonna go over all these edges first and see what I can get off. Okay. Get your mask, kids. Redoing this dresser has really made me so grateful for all of my tools back in Georgia. Like, I was getting so annoyed with how much dust there was all over the shop. I love my dust extractor so freaking much. If you guys are interested in it, it will be linked down below. Those are affiliate links, so I do get a small commission off of those items if you do choose to purchase them. But I highly recommend a dust extractor or even just a vacuum with an attachment to hook up to your sander. That makes a world of a difference. I'm so glad that I ended up bringing this sander because I knew this dresser was going to be here for me to flip and I knew the sander would make it 10 times easier and surely it did and it was well worth bringing it up. So now that I have the edges sanded with my Festral sander, the fronts of them are not sanded yet and I didn't sand those with my Festral sander because it takes a little bit longer and I knew I had this bad boy here so I want to go in with this to cover the flat surfaces. It's going to remove that finish pretty easily and quickly so I'm going to go over all the drawer fronts with this sander with a 120 grit sandpaper and then we'll move on to the rest of the dresser. All the tools that you see me using besides my Festral sander are just tools that we have laying around, older tools that we had. The sander I actually started off flipping furniture with in Alaska, and my goodness, it makes me love my Ryobi sander. I know that I am just such a big fan of my Ryobi sander and I've gotten so used to it, but boy, is it so different from this DeWalt one. And yes, like it is an old sander, but I just love Ryobi. It's like too good. And then after I finished covering all of the flat surfaces, I went back in with my Festral sander to go over any rounded areas like the edges of these nightstands and the dresser. So 
So I have sanded everything over there in the top of this dresser. But I'm about to call it for the day and there is a huge stain on the top of this large dresser. I want to fix this tonight so it can sit overnight and hopefully be good in the morning enough to finish this set off. So what I would go to to get rid of the stain is oxalic acid, but I don't have any and I'm trying to fix this overnight right now with what I have. So first we're going to try some baking soda. I'm just going to sprinkle some baking soda over the surface, let it sit for a few hours, and hopefully it pulls something out. So I'm just following what the internet says, so don't come at me. But if you have any other recommendations for getting these stains out of wood besides oxalic acid, leave it in the comments below. So the baking soda ended up not working. I think it did lift a little bit out, but I didn't have high hopes for it in the beginning and I didn't really expect it to work that well, if any. So I wasn't super bummed when I vacuumed it up. I did just want to try something that I had on hand. I wasn't a time crunch because I waited till the last minute to flip this set and I was leaving in just a few days. So I needed to get it done and that's what I had on hand and it ended up not working that great. I think the whitewash will cover it somewhat but not completely and it's just gonna have to do for now and that's okay Once I was finished with all of the sanding, I did go in with an air compressor hose to remove a majority of that dust and boy oh boy was there so much dust in the shop and on the pieces of furniture, it was ridiculous. So thank goodness I had an air compressor here. If you don't have an air compressor, a leaf blower works just as well actually. Hopefully you can hear me with all these noises going on, but I'll try to speak up. Um, so I'm gonna start paint washing now. The time is ticking. I gotta get this done. I want to get everything paint washed and then get a coat of top coat on these. Going with the paint wash here. However, I'm pretty familiar with the paint wash ratio that I like to use on my furniture pieces, and I'm used to working with that ratio, which is normally a three to one ratio. So three parts water, one part paint. This time I'm gonna go one part paint, one part water. The reason for that. I want to cover a lot more imperfections on this piece than other uh, pieces of furniture that I've done in the past where I just wanted a really light paint wash. This one, I want it to give it some color, make it the tone that I want, but I also want it to hide some little imperfections because these are nowhere near perfect, um, but I still think it's going to look really great with this paint wash, and I still want that wood grain to show through. So I went with a little bit more paint in this mixture, we're going to see how that turns out, most importantly. We have our spray bottle, so it's gonna be an easy application. I've got lots of rags to wipe it off with, and of course, my paint wash. So, let's get going. I'm gonna go on the drawers first, and then I'll work on everything else. So I'm using the water here almost as if it was a pre-stain. So if I'm going in with the stain, you go in with the pre-stain first so that your stain applies more evenly and gives you a nice pretty finish rather than being a little bit splotchy. So the water is going to wet the surface. So when I go ahead and apply that paint wash, it's not getting applied to a dry surface that's gonna dry really quickly and then it might give me an uneven finish. So having a nice prepped wet surface for the paint wash to go onto gives you a nice seamless finish. And you'll notice I'm trying to apply the paint wash in the same direction as the wood grain, but I'm especially trying to make sure that I'm wiping off that paint wash in the direction of the wood grain so it looks more natural if there is any streaks left behind.
Alright, everything has been whitewashed. It's been sitting to dry for just a little bit. I think by the time I work my way up through the drawers into the dresser bases, um, everything will kind of be dry if I work in the same pattern that I applied the whitewash to. So, starting with the drawers, I'm going in with a Varathane polyurethane. This is the triple thick one. I think this is going to be really good to brush on and just give it one really thorough coat um, and really protect the surface. So I'm just going to go in with the paintbrush, sadly. Redoing this has been really humbling for me, um, not having all of my tools. But you can still do it with very minimal tools. So paintbrush it is, and I'm going to try this out. I've never tried the triple thick before, so hopefully it works well. It is definitely thick. Oh, I actually love it. I was really loving this top coat. I've never used the triple thick here, but I think I'll be using this again in the future flips, but it was applying really nicely with this paintbrush, and I'm doing kind of the same technique here, and I'm applying it in the same direction as the wood grain. So you'll see here, I kind of apply the top coat and then any areas I need to touch up. So the center wood grain is going in one direction and then the sides are going in the opposite direction. So I'm making sure to run over those in the direction of the wood grain so it looks more natural when the top coat dries. And normally I would spray my top coat on, but I don't have my paint sprayer. So I'm just trying to minimize the appearance of any brush strokes here. And this is what's gonna do that for me. And then it was finally time to get the dresser inside, get the drawers in and the hardware on. This is the hardware I decided to go with. I think it's a super pretty gold. It's gonna make these look really clean and elegant. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get hardware for all of the drawers. I thought I purchased the correct size, but because I waited till the last minute, I needed to find hardware local. So I picked these up from Lowe's and nowhere in town had the correct dimensions for the poles on the bottom drawers. So unfortunately, those don't have hardware yet. I am ordering some for it, so they will get hardware shortly, but they just don't have any for this video. So try to ignore those as best you can. But I feel like you can get the gist from the other drawers and seeing all the rest of the hardware. So now let's go back and take a look at what this set looked like when we started off so that we can really appreciate what we are ending up with. Thank 
you all so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to flip a set of furniture while I was back home. If you haven't already seen the bedroom makeover, that video will be linked down below. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up so they know that you liked it and leave me some comments down below letting me know how you think this set turned out. But as for now, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.